Hi, my name is Ian, and I'm going to briefly describe a mathematical mystery. I've been thinking about this problem for about a week, uh, finally arriving at a solution around 2 a.m. last night. The paradox was first introduced to my mind by a YouTube video posted by Mike Lawler. His recordings are very inter interesting and educational, so I recommend checking them out. The question is this. How many rotations will it take a circle to roll around another circle of equivalent circumference? My intuition, and perhaps yours, suggests it should rotate only once to make it around. After all, its circumference is equal to the path it must travel. Or is it? When we run the test, we notice a 1 to 2 relationship between the outside circles. So for example, we have two quarters here, acting as our two equivalent circles. And if I try to rotate the circle on the right around the circle on the left with minimal slippage, we should see very quickly that it doesn't move as much as you'd suspect given the amount that it is rotated. So right now, it has made it a quarter of the way, pardon the pun, around the inside quarter, but it has rotated half. He's on his head, so he's rotated, this coin is rotated half, halfway around, but it's only made it a quarter of the way around the circle. So you go another quarter of the way around the circle, and he'll be facing the way he was at the beginning, just on the opposite side of the circle. Moving these a little bit to the left so we can see, and we'll continue the rotation. As you can see, George on the left here is rotated once completely, but he's only halfway around the entire circle. How could this be? The distance around George on the left is equivalent to the path he's trying to travel. Or is it? The outside circle's rotation and the progress it makes around the inside circle are not equivalent, but why? The answer lies in seeing the quarter or the outside circle as a collection of points then we realize that they are all traveling different paths around the circle. At only one point is the circle traveling roughly the circumference of the inside circle. All the rest of the quarter is doing something else. What is it doing? So we must find the average distance from the center, the absolute center of here, the inside circle, or the mean path radius, mean is another word for average in this case, to calculate the true orbit distance or circumference. Breaking the outside circle into an xy axis, we notice the average xy position rests at the center or the origin of the circle. At any point in time during its orbit around the inside circle, the average distance from the center of the inside circle is at the center of the outside circle. So as this circle is traveling, the average distance from this circle to the center of rotation is at the center of this circle. So the real radius of rotation is not from here to here. It's from here to here, which is exactly double. And this accounts for the disparity between the rotation amount and the amount of progress it has made around the inside circle. In conclusion, to calculate the number of rotations the outside circle must complete during one trip around the inside circle of equal size, we must first find the distance from the absolute center of all the points on the outside circle. Then we can find the mean path radius, which allows us to complete or compute the mean path circumference. So once we realize that the average distance from the center of rotation is here on the rotating circle, we can use that radius to calculate the circumference using 2 pi r. Once we find that circumference, we can divide it by the circumference of the outside circle to determine precisely the number of rotations that it will require to completely circumnavigate the inside circle. I hope this has been interesting. I hope to also post more YouTube videos about a variety of topics coming up soon. Thank you. And good night.